Hello, and welcome back to a special episode of Community Hotline. My name is James Offsink, and we're here today to talk about the Gresham safety measure. Uh, we're fortunate to be joined by Gresham City Manager Nina Vetter and Gresham Fire Chief Scott Lewis. Thank you so much both for being here. Thank you. So, Nina, can you tell us a little bit about the primary goals of the upcoming levy? Yeah, absolutely. So our Gresham safety levy that's on the ballot in May of this year um, is a five-year operating levy that would fund our critical safety services at an average cost of about $28 uh, per household. Um, so our community safety levy is really focused on a few key areas, police, fire, homelessness response, and mental health response. Uh, since the city has been in a budget crisis for the last few decades, um, we have not been able to provide the community really with the services um, that they need, that they demand, and the services that are needed in these changing times um, as safety has, has evolved. So the Gresham Safety Levy would allow us to stabilize our current services that we do provide in safety and add strategically positions across those critical safety areas so that we can be more responsive and we can be proactive. In addition, it would allow us to expand our hours of service and availability of our homelessness response team, which is really important. And we continue to hear from the local businesses that we have that that service is critical. And like I mentioned, it would also allow us to avoid layoffs uh, because we do need a solution for revenue in order to just maintain what we have today, not even expand. Uh, thank you. And as you kind of went through, I think the four areas that you said were police, fire, um, homelessness, and mental health. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if you could say a little bit about how the city came up with you know that mix, or if mm -hmm. this levy bears on a greater ability to collaborate, or if, uh, between those different areas. It seems like there's so much overlap. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the city went through a strategic planning process over the last few years and heard from the community. Uh, we heard from kids in schools. Uh, we heard from seniors. We heard from everyone across our community about what was really important. And one of the key strategic priority areas that was developed was community safety. Um, in addition to that, you know, we know we have needs across our whole city. We provide a lot of services to the community. But in the last year, we've had two third-party studies done. One was a police organizational assessment, and one that was most recent was our fire standards of cover. And both of those studies highlighted the staffing gaps that we have and the staffing needs that we have in both of those key departments. So both of those reports and that information was key in us developing what this levy should be for. Mm -hmm. Again, knowing we have needs across the city, but knowing that we have very big gaps in our police and fire areas in particular, and that our community is highly concerned and highly interested in helping achieve goals for those two areas. That's great, thank you. And we're very thankful to have you here, um, Chief Lewis. I wondered if you could kind of maybe give some more specifics to what Nina talked about with respect to the particular need in the Gresham Fire Department. The Gresham Fire Department has been pretty stagnant. I've been here 20 years and became the fire chief in October. And over those 20 years, we've really increased daily minimum staffing by one two-person pickup truck, wow. which we call a rescue. And that rescue goes to lower acuity calls, the less serious ones, leaving the heavy assets, the big red fire engines in service for something that's more serious. Mm -hmm. So as our population has increased, our population has gotten denser, our calls for service have gone up in a similar manner. Mm -hmm. So the proposal on the ballot for May would add one more of those two-person rescues on the east side of town, where we have the other one on the northwest end of town, and provide relief to a fire engine that is very busy on its own. But we also found out through the standard of cover report that Nina just mentioned, that about 46% of the time when that engine is out on a call, there's another call for service in its service area. So on nearly 50% of the time, 50 of the time it's out, another engine has to come in and cover for another call. Wow. So putting that two-person rescue in there to take those first calls, those lower acuity calls, again, would leave that fire engine in service for the more critical calls. And as we get into uh, a little deeper into it, the plan also calls for reinstating three deputy fire marshals that have been cut over 15 years ago. We just haven't had the resources to restore those positions. Now those positions will allow us to do more public education and we do almost none now. Okay. So being able to do fire prevention, fall prevention for our elderlies and uh, 
businesses, you know, that we now get into now to do the inspections. And uh, the third portion of that, or the fourth, would be fire inspections in the schools. We're not inspecting the schools on a regular basis. Now they have very good maintenance crews and they keep them up. And a lot of our schools have been uh, remodeled or replaced through levees and they have new alarm systems and sprinkler systems. So we're not worried about a lot of uh, danger to the kids that are in those schools, but we still need to get in there and do those fire safety inspections to make sure something's not being missed. Thank you. Uh, wow, that's a, a lot of different areas and brings a number, to mind a number of different questions. Um, starting with the last thing first, could you talk maybe about the importance of investing in some of this fire prevention work as you know a long-term kind of benefit to the community, but also cost savings measure? Yeah, so I, I don't want to spout statistics that I can't remember exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. But quite frequently, if you have a fire in a business, mm -hmm. especially a, uh, a small business, family-owned business, they are generally undercapitalized and they can't stay afloat during that period when their business is remodeled and the, mm -hmm. and the, and the space is made usable again for them. So frequently, those small businesses, when they have a fire, they're done. They're mm -hmm. out of business and they go to work for somebody else. And in larger businesses, they will take that opportunity to relocate. Mm. So there's a high percentage of small businesses that never reopen, and then the larger ones will take that opportunity to move to a, either a bigger location, a smaller location, or somebody else may be offering them a better tax deal or something, and they'll relocate. So commercial and business fires have a, a detrimental f impact on communities they, uh, they're in. So that's kind of the uh, money measure mm -hmm. portion of that fire prevention model. Yeah, thank you. That's really helpful. Um, I wondered if you could, did I hear correctly that the main uh, add in terms of staff is three additional positions, or was that just one slice of should the levy pass what you're picturing? Should the levy pass, we will add an additional two-person rescue mm -hmm. at Station 72 over by Cane Road Park. Now those two people, that's two people every day and we staff three shifts, so that's six people working every day. And then there's a, another component of that, which are uh, filling in for the people that are on vacation sick or all those other kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's cheaper to hire people than it is to pay overtime to fill empty seats. Sure. So there would be nine new firefighters that would be hired, three deputy fire marshals. And then the third component would be four personnel to staff what we call an MIH, or Mobile Integrated Health Unit. Okay. Those would be two nurses, two EMTs, and these would be the ones that go out and respond to those very lowest acuity calls, where there's not likely to be a transport to the hospital, mm -hmm. they're not in any kind of immediate danger, but those are the calls that take the longest. Mm -hmm. You have a, a person who's been discharged from a hospital, and they don't exactly understand their prescriptions, they have to make a follow-up appointment for their family doc, and they don't do those kind of things, or somebody who's a repeat caller to 911. We have a lot of people we refer to as our dedicated customers, <laughs> okay. and, and they, they use our service a lot, mm -hmm. but frequently their need is not a 911 call. Mm -hmm. They simply don't have a better resource. Mm -hmm. So these MIH, these Mobile Integrated Health Units, can take care of setting them up for social programs, making sure they're in connection with the right place. Sometimes all they really need to maintain a healthy environment is a ride to the Senior Citizen Center, and they simply don't have that way to engage that. So those are a lot of the things that uh, Mobile Integrated Health can do because they have the time to spend 30, 40, an hour with an individual either a couple or an individual uh, person who needs something more than just a 911 call with a big red truck coming to their mm -hmm. front door. That's really helpful, thank you. Um, I wondered actually speaking a little bit about the effectiveness of these dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, I think voters understand this is um, a lot of money for the city of Gresham, but also, you know, I think you said that on, for the average Gresham home, it was gonna be something like $28 mm -hmm. a month, um, which definitely, you know, adds up over a year, mm -hmm. um, and I know that the city takes that in community investment really seriously. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to things like, you know, saving money, um, you know, paying for regular time instead of overtime, I wondered if you mm -hmm. could uh, 
adds anything about how this money will be used effectively at yeah, the city? Absolutely. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Um, you know, when we were putting together what is the Gresham Safety Levy, um, like I mentioned, we did talk, look at the Police Organizational Assessment Review as well as the Fire Standards of Cover and had great conversations with our staff about you know, what is the most strategic and effective use if we are going to be asking our community to invest, if we're gonna mm -hmm. be asking our community for more. Um, it's not just, we don't wanna ask for things that, oh, that sounds nice, or maybe we would like to try that. Um, it's really, what is the resource that's needed that's backed up by our third party studies? What is a resource that we know in time will return its investment like fire prevention and some of the prevention efforts mm -hmm. that we also have in our police department that would be funded out of the levy? Um, so we definitely considered all of those when putting it together. It's what is the strategic additions that we need to make that will not only serve us today, mm -hmm. but will actually set, our, set up our community and our departments for more success in the long term. That's great, thank you so much. Um, I wondered, I, both of you, I don't know who would like to start on this, um, to maybe give some more specifics about what, you know, as an average community member, taxpayer, whatever, if this should pass, you know, a year or two years from now when the money has been uh, actualized and the programs have been implemented, mm -hmm. what is going to feel different? You know, I mean, can, is there, uh, you know, boots on the ground, something that can be described that we can't do this today and should this pass, we're going to be doing this differently? Yeah, I think from um, a response perspective, um, our response times don't meet the national standards. Okay. In fact, for a community our size, we're about 30% busier than other communities of similar population. And you would think that we would have more firefighters, but actually we have less firefighters in those other communities. Mm. And those kind of resource uh, challenges drive up response times. Because if somebody is coming from further away, it simply takes longer to get there. And if you've lived in Gresham very long at all, you've noticed our traffic is more congested and busier than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So having that resource close to you will give them their quicker, uh, reduce that response time, and improve the level of service we give to you. In a situation where maybe every second matters. There, there are those, and mm -hmm. uh, some people overplay that, okay. but certainly I've been in the business long enough to see that difference matter. Mm -hmm. And it happens in Gresham uh, on a regular basis. I dare to say almost daily Mm -hmm. Our people responding to those homes make a difference in the outcome of those individuals. Mm -hmm. Second to that, you'll see us doing more public education, mm -hmm. whether it's a, uh, a seniors group or a scout troop or um, an evening uh, activity that the city is hosting, having people there passing along that fire prevention message mm -hmm. is really the best way because we're not going to be able to go to everybody's home and do their own fire inspection. But if we can be in the public where the people will gather and you need to go to them because it's hard to get them to come to you, that's when you have the ability to impact and actually make that connection with the public. Mm -hmm. And pass along that crucial information. Pass along that yeah. crucial information. Mm -hmm. One of the things, uh, we were fortunate enough to share our message at the Senior Citizen Center last week, and one of the things that they concern about is fall protection. Mm. So it doesn't take a lot to keep people from falling, but they simply don't know. Mm. They've had throw rugs down their hallway mm -hmm. for 20 years. It's time to roll up the, the, the rug mm -hmm. and move it out of your hallway, simply so you don't fall. Mm -hmm. And getting that message out, mm -hmm. we haven't been able to do, but it's important to those communities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that example of some quick tips and tools that exist that we just haven't had the staffing or support to be able to work on the education where there are some things that our community can be doing that are really simple that would make them safer across mm -hmm. the board. Um, and if we had more resources to get to dedicate towards that, you know, proactive prevention resource, we could really ultimately make our community safer. Thank you. I know that the uh, challenges around homelessness in Gresham are one of the considerations uh, for this, the investment of this levy. Um, and I know, you know, there's a lot of different parts of that. And I wondered if either of you had anything to say about the overlap between the fire department and how, you know, this levy might change, um, I don't know, either collaboration around dealing with individuals experiencing homelessness or uh, any change that 
makes sense to, to make sure that voters know about? It's uh, when Gresham Start had it, having its own homeless outreach. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, that sounds good and, and understand that. But when my firefighters got mm -hmm. the phone number mm -hmm. of the person to call, when somebody's in trouble and mm -hmm. needs a resource mm -hmm. that they can't provide, mm -hmm. that was like an aha moment for our firefighters. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, because we've been dealing with this for a number of years, mm -hmm. and as it is now, uh, the resource is great, but it could use more hours in the day, hours in the week. And I think that's one of the things that the, that the levy promises to put forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we constantly hear um, how responsive our homelessness response team is. Um, you know, their priority is to n connect people who are experiencing homelessness with the right resource. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own unique situation, unique story of how they ended up in that position. And mm -hmm. so the solution is not always the same. Uh, and our team is really responsive in, in spending some time with that person or a group of people, if it might be, understanding what they need and trying to connect them with that resource. But like you mentioned, the challenge that we have is we, we have limited staff, so we have limited hours. Um, and it'd be really nice, you know, homelessness impacts people all times of the day, not just, you know, Monday through Friday, eight to five. Okay. Uh, so we constantly hear from our businesses and from our community. This is a great resource and it would be really great if it was available, um, you know, on the weekends and after business hours. And I guess in that same vein, feels like a theme of the levy, should it pass, is to be able to connect the right resource to the community member at the right moment. And it mm -hmm. seems like you know, this, this helps make that possible, whereas before, or I guess the current state, it's really difficult to always make, to, for Gresham to be able um, to commit to that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. That is our goal is put the right resource to the problem. Uh, we do our best every day, our team, whether it's police, fire, or homelessness response team, uh, we do our best to respond the best we can, but we have such limited staff. Um, sometimes we can't always send the perfect response mm -hmm. or the perfect resource to the situation. Um, and if we can do that, if we are able to have more staff where we can provide the right resource to the problem, not only are we properly dealing with the situation and hopefully providing a solution to the people or the person involved in the issue or the situation, but hopefully we're also preventing any further crime or medical mm -hmm. incidents because we are providing that more thorough response. So it's not just about responding in the moment, it's also trying to prevent further incidents, which again, is hard to do with the staff we have today, Certainly. but with more staff, we would be able to do that for our community. Well, that's wonderful. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for this segment. But uh, thank you so much, Fire Chief Scott Lewis and uh, City Manager Nina Vetter for sharing your time and expertise with our viewers today. Once again, I'm James Offsink, and this has been a special episode of Community Hotline uh, leading for the Gresham Public Safety Measure leading up to the May 16th election. Uh, in order to vote in this election, you need to be registered by April 25th. Thank you for tuning in and for being an informed voter. <laughs>